I recently heard someone say, it's not about doing your best. It's about doing what's required. Are they different? Very. Here's my take. Doing your best has an emotional component attached to it. It's subjective. What exactly is your best? Well, it's a story that you tell yourself. A narrative opening the door to limitation. I've always found that when we put our backs against the wall and venture into scenarios where it's essential that we get something done, we somehow always find a way. When we leave no plan B for ourselves, we are required to make plan A work. And so we do. It's a testament to both the resilience and power contained in the human spirit, as well as the reality that we can astound ourselves when we're unwilling to take no for an answer. That it's not the resources that are the problem. It's usually our unwillingness to move forward into the dark our hesitance to try, explore, test, build, and rebuild. Actions that are surprisingly unrelated to one's best and have everything to do with accepting nothing less than an identified outcome. One of the reasons I fell in love with the sport of running is because it reinforced this notion in my life. It became the template with which I could repeatedly amaze myself. I talk a lot about earning confidence and oh, how I earned it. Step by step, mile by mile, day by day, in the sun, in the rain, in the desert, in the woods, through city streets, all over the country and the world, I came to understand the relationship between the turbulence of now and the satisfaction of later. It was on those days I pushed beyond my usual level of, of comfort. When that cloud of pain and uh, agony would hover over me. I couldn't even really point to where my body hurt. It just all seemed to come together into this one giant hell and to learn that I could not only endure that, but grow in those moments. To see myself rise above any preconceived notion or understanding of best in order to defeat my demons, conquer the day's objective, it changes the way you see yourself in the world. Now, could onlookers be tempted to call these self-created goals arbitrary, even unnecessary? Sure, and I get why they would, but I'd also completely disagree. Those days were a master class in doing what is necessary. Realizing that when you shut your rational brain off and don't give your mind a chance to talk your body out of it, you can see just how powerful you are. You realize that story of your best is nothing more than a house built on sand. Life is not about that story you've told yourself. It's not about your personal records and peak performances, what you think you can do or how far you think you might be able to go. It's about not stopping in the moments when it hurts. Doing what is required, a decision that compounds over time to create what was once impossible. One of my favorite quotes is by Admiral William McRaven, an absolute hero of mine. And funny enough, he says, if you want to change the world, you must be your very best in your darkest moments. And what a beautiful idea to rise when life presents its periods of turbulence. And sure, it may be a matter of semantics, but in those moments of darkness, I think of your best not in the traditional sense, not as a personal metric, but as a willingness to do what must be done, a removal of the spotlight from you altogether and instead pointed directly at the road ahead, at the task at hand. When you choose to make the journey, not about what you can and cannot do, but instead make it about what must be done, 
the universe, as Paulo Coelho has so elegantly stated, conspires to make it happen. I think back to my journey and at so many periods my best wasn't good enough. I was so lost and so overwhelmed that the only thing I could do was not stop moving. That was my superpower, simply trudge through the fear of things falling apart, the nagging pride and hurting ego. And what I learned was that life is no different than all those miles I'd put in running. How I felt and what my previous capabilities were, what I deemed my best to be, it was all noise, it was all irrelevant. What was required was that I move forward through the chaos and to something better, and so I did. And in your world, so can you. The stories we tell ourselves are so powerful and in many ways valuable in our journey through life. But there's one narrative that eliminates the necessity of so many others. You can get to the top of whatever mountain you are seeking to climb so long as you do not stop. So long as you let go of the limitations tied to your quote unquote best and instead do what is required to get there. You'll see how adaptable and transformative that best really is. How it's a lagging indicator. It will take time, but you're capable of being patient. And it will have its moments of chaos, but you are capable of weathering those storms. It will present obstacles that leave you unclear, uncertain, sometimes unprepared, but you're capable of picking your head up and moving through that haze. What you know of yourself now is a fraction of a fraction of a fraction of what you're capable of doing. And how far that goes will be determined not by putting a stake in the ground and calling it your personal best, but as Emerson has said, by hitching your wagon to a star and pulling yourself towards its light a little bit at a time. There's a saying that will always be true. It will be true on your best days and your worst. It will be true after victory and it will be true after defeat. It will be true when you have momentum and it will be true when you're down on your luck doing everything in your power to create momentum. That saying is, your future begins now. Hey, on the surface, might not seem like much. Sure, my future starts now. I know that. Everyone knows that. Well, if that's true, if everyone does, in fact, know that, why do we spend so much time stuck, reliving our past, unable to break free? Why do we remain terrified to change? Why do we feel such a connection to who we were, how others saw us? Why must we remain loyal to the character we've been playing in our mental autobiographies? See, here's the thing about the past and the future. One is fixed can't be changed, and the other, well, it's waiting for you to tell it what it is. One is expired time, one is plans to be determined. And it's interesting how we continue to conflate the two. Epictetus has said that the more things we value outside of our control, the less control we have. Well, I'm going to be the messenger here, relaying the precious truth that Yesterday is, in fact, out of our control. What can be controlled is where we go from here. The next step. Meaning today is not your failures. It's where you take those lessons. It's not your mistakes. But it's what the stronger you can now endure because of them. It's not the dreams you let slip away, but where your pursuit might take you now. And yeah, yesterday certainly contributes to your outlook, as all information does. Its value considered, its impact assessed. It guides you, but it's not you. 
And that difference is astronomical. There's a question about the role the past plays in our lives. That has to mean something, right? Your past is, in many ways, your story. It's why you think the way you do. It's contributed to your understanding of the world. It will always be a part of you, and I believe that. But I also believe the past is a story. And just like reading one chapter in a book simply sets the stage for the next one without controlling its direction, so does every day that has led you up to now. Life gives us the tools to experience, to grow, learn, and then shed that which does not coincide with what's important. Your failures are not you. But they are precious in that they push you towards what you'd like to be. See, you can experience something and not be that thing. As Kierkegaard says, if you label me, you negate me. If you proclaim me to be X, you're essentially stealing from me the infinite possibility that is the future. Yesterday has nothing to do with what I can become. And so taking it a step further, never mind being labeled by someone else, how could you label yourself and see it as anything but self-sabotage? See, you're never defined by your past, but always learning from it. It's not who you are. It's the cheat codes for what you can be. Without that winding road of misfortune and mistakes, the incredible expansion we long for doesn't materialize. Imagine if everyone who, who ever felt down in life, felt like a loser, who temporarily lost hope. Imagine if they looked in the mirror and said, okay, this is who I am now. There would be no triumph in the world because anything meaningful requires the resiliency to map our way from the hell that was our darkest moments to what will become our proudest moments. Destiny, destiny, destiny means that you separate the finite from the infinite. What you used to call yourself has prepared you to move towards the horizon. But what you used to call yourself is also as irrelevant now as those seconds that you watched tick away. Seconds that maybe you're not proud of. Seconds that perhaps taught you about the world. Seconds that gave you a glimpse of what's possible, unveiled the happiest of times, all of it. In its own unique way, it brought value, but none of it is your future. Why? Because back to that beautiful, all-powerful sentence, your future begins now. Your destiny is awaiting its marching orders, and all you have to decide as you stand today is where that ship will sail. So life is the sum of the decisions we make. But which decisions? How am I supposed to know? Well, maybe a list will help some pros and some cons, list one. Finding the courage to do something new, okay? Cons, it could be a waste of time. Could embarrass myself, could lose money, could get criticized. Pros, could be life-changing. Finding the courage to go somewhere new, okay? Cons, might not like where I go, might not know how to get there. Might regret going. Pros could end up being the best decision I've ever made. Finding the courage to change myself, okay, cons. Might not like who I become. Might try, fail, and feel worse than I did to begin with. It's possible. Pros, well, I might become exactly who I need to be. So looking at this, it essentially comes down to conserving the old or making the new. Maintaining or capturing the upside. But it doesn't quite delineate my problem. Okay, so different angle, list two. Finding the courage to do something new. If I fail, is it reversible? Yes. I can fail. 
And if I do, I'll simply go back to doing that which I had been doing. All right, finding the courage to go somewhere new. If I don't like the destination, is it reversible? Yes. I can change my flights, grab a train, turn the car around. I decide where I go. Finding the courage to change myself. If I don't like the trajectory, is it reversible? Yes. If I don't like how I'm evolving, I can stop. I can start back at the beginning. Who you are is in your control, okay? So after two lists, the pros have immense upside and the cons, well, they have relatively minor downside and they are reversible. Meaning if I try something I've always wanted to try, go somewhere, I've always wanted to go become the person I've always wanted to be, things could fall apart. But the damage is more annoying than it is life altering. It's not forever, it's fixable. On the other side, if I hit that home run, my life changes, my world evolves, what's possible expands. And it's not that I will, it's that I could. And doesn't everything start with could? A seed of possibility? An idea that plants roots and when merged with courage and action take shape? Of course. But most importantly, this information in front of me tells me something pretty incredible. A story with few words and infinite meaning. The key that unlocks some of the most important doors to be opened. And it's this. Most of our inaction, most of our regret, most of our almost come from cowering amidst possible outcomes that are reversible. Running from potential consequences that we could wipe clean like a dry erase board and try again. The downside, it pales in comparison to the upside. We're running from a, a slap on the wrist or the momentary anxiety associated with turning down the wrong street, right? That's the takeaway here. That's where the magic lies, not in the possibility that everything could work out, but the realization that if it doesn't, life moves right along. That contrary to the narrative so often making its home in the back of our minds, life has redos. You can screw up. You can reverse track and start again. The only action you can't fix is the one you never take. And well, I'm looking at this list and I just don't see any upside in that. In John Maxwell's book, The 21 Irrefutable Laws of Leadership, he talks about momentum. And how the saying, if you can't take the heat, then get out of the kitchen, doesn't quite get it right. Advocating that it should instead be, if you can't create the heat, then get out of the kitchen. And being that we are all leaders in our own lives, I think he hits on something that none of us should overlook. The power of momentum of not waiting, but creating. Reminding ourselves that we are not spectators, sitting in the stands and simply reacting to or complaining about the events taking place below. No, we have the ability to change the things we do not like and create the ones that don't yet exist when we know they should. Too much of the time we react to that metaphorical heat in the kitchen, as John alludes to. Forgetting that we can dial it up or down. We're not only characters that have been created, we are ourselves creators. And I talk a lot about mental shifts that have changed my life, and there are plenty. But perhaps the most important was the realization that I can do something about the things I don't like. And I know that sounds simple, probably even obvious. But I look back at various stages of my life and I'm blown away by the amount of things I tolerated for years and years simply because I gave it no thought. There were so many questions that I never asked, so many opportunities I never explored. Until I realized, hey, you can stop accepting those things you don't want. 
It's amazing the power of a simple list that was created. Two columns, left side, all the things that bothered me, that I wasn't happy with, or that I knew should be there that had been lacking. And then on the right column, what I'm going to do about it. Every single item, each one. What's the step I'm going to take? And I just poured my heart onto that paper. And it's like you look down and feel like you have finally moved into the driver's seat. There's something incredible about knowing that you have taken control, something satisfying, knowing that you're not just accepting what falls out of the sky and lands in your hands. Right? Especially since we seem to have this proclivity to box ourselves in. Human beings are amazing in their ability to adapt. But the danger is when we adapt to and normalize a reality that falls short of what matters to us. The danger is in forgetting that nothing happens without momentum, and momentum is self-made. One of my favorite stories is about a man walking through the circus. And he sees these enormous elephants, each with one end of a rope, tied around one of their legs, and the other end of that rope connected to a chair. The man, as he's walking by, he's curious, asks one of the trainers, hey, isn't that dangerous? Couldn't the elephant easily break free and get away if he wanted? And the trainer says, no. See, we started doing this when they were baby elephants. And when they were babies, they couldn't physically break free. They weren't strong enough. And so over the years, as they grew and became bigger, stronger, it never dawned on them that by simply pulling on that rope or walking away, they could break free. These chains might as well be invisible. And that's what they were, mental. The rope wasn't keeping the elephants to the chair, the elephants were keeping the elephants to the chair. And there's something there in that message for all of us. For some of us in this particular moment, maybe it's big picture. For others, maybe we're at a season of life where it's simply creating momentum uh, in some type of smaller capacity. And I travel through these ups and downs personally all the time. I think that's a healthy thing. It's a sign that you're looking for that growth. You're checking the world around you for those imaginary ropes. Recently, I went through a period where I just felt too long had gone by without something significant happening. I needed to create momentum. And so I asked, well, who was I reaching out to? How was I pushing myself? What was I doing that scared me? What was I doing that was growing? How could I take things up a level? All these little levers of opportunity are all around us, but we have to know to look for them, to see them and pull. And it's truly an incredible thing. You do that and you start to feel the movement underneath you, the momentum, the excitement, because you're trying new things. You're taking new risks, talking to new people. And that's how that snowball grows. We have to realize that we are mighty big elephants perpetually tied to these comically small chairs. We have to create that heat in the kitchen because we're not only capable, we are ready. We are equipped to move forward. See, the moment is never going to be perfect. The momentum will never come to be on its own. Those things wait. They wait for you to stop watching life go by and click start on the stopwatch. Yeah, time has always ticked away, but it will never mean as much as it's about to now. Tick, talk, whispers the opportunity, signifying that in order to evolve, we must decide we are bold enough to go where we have not yet gone and strong enough to leave some things behind, to choose to accept some discomfort in its impermanence 
instead of a regret that is forever. And that's a trade that demands we look into the future and find value in the unseen. It's a move that says the seconds ticking by mean too much to dishonor them by not making the most of what's around you. And those answers are always there. At the end of the day, that's what it's all about, right? We make decisions without even realizing we're making them. To accept the current moment as fate is to choose what you're given over what is possible, over everything that's out there, available for you. It's never too late to pull on that rope around your foot, to be who you, as the saying goes, might have been. Know that in your world, nothing consistently shows up or exists without your stamp of approval. That will always be true. Nothing carries on without you allowing it to do so. And that understanding will be the difference between the ground level and the exponential heights you are capable of reaching. The creation, the email, the phone call, the ride, the book, the period of time, the step out the door, any and all of life's seemingly unremarkable characteristics, within them is your ticket to greatness. Just know that you have to be the one that winds the clock. You are the sun around which everything else revolves, the architect that makes something of value from them. There will always be momentum where you decide there should be momentum. So pick your head up, open the door, and step out into the world of potential that awaits.